Hello everyone, I've had a request to do a video on feline immunodeficiency virus uh, this week, or cat AIDS as we all know it. Um, so, uh, feline uh, immunodeficiency virus, it is a mouthful, um, FIV, um, is similar to HIV and in much the same way that AIDS is related to HIV in humans, um, feline AIDS is related to FIV in cats. The first and most important thing to say, I guess, is that you cannot catch FIV from cats. So cats can't give you AIDS. Um, so what is FIV? Feline Im immunodeficiency virus is a family of viruses called lentiviruses. And what they do is they in infect a certain type of white blood cell called a T lymphocyte. And what they do is they get in there, they kill those T lymphocytes off and essentially immunocompromise the animal. And that's the same in people as well. So just as in people, lots of cats can go around that are infected with FIV and actually they don't show any signs at all um, because the actual FIV itself isn't causing a disease it's the effect of that immunocompromise and it might take a few years before that immunocompromise actually starts to show any problems so how do they get it well just as in humans it has to be particularly close contact so generally uh, blood to blood contact so the most commonly affected animals are cats that fight and of all the cats that fight it's unneutered tomcats that tend to have the, the, the greatest proportion of fights and hence uh, tend to have the uh, highest levels of FIV uh, infection. So they can get it, there is a small chance that they can get it from sort of uh, cat to cat transfer through saliva, so sharing bowls. And it's not known at the moment whether it can be spread through biting insects. So essentially a flea that has a blood meal on one cat and uh, an infected cat uh, goes on to another cat, uh, bites that one, can that infect it? It's not known at the moment whether that is. I guess it, it, the gen in, in the population, probably one and a half, two percent of cats are FIV positive, i.e. have been exposed to and have uh, and have been infected by the FIV virus. So what does that mean for them? Well, like I say, a cat can be infected with, with FIV and not actually show any signs or symptoms. Uh, it can be sort of a latent carrier of it and still be uh, spreading that disease on, onto other cats. Um, generally, we find that the median survival time and if you go back a few videos, I'll, you know, you can talk about what median means. You can see what I said about that. Um, the median survival time is, is five years old, is, is five years. So if a cat is diagnosed with FIV, we would expect that half of them would die within five years. Now, that isn't as bad as it sounds because quite a lot of cats are diagnosed when they're eight, nine, 10. So half of them takes you up to sort of 14, 15. And so there, is some, there are some studies that show that there is no overall shortening of their life at all. What can you do uh, to prevent them from getting it? Well, there is no vaccine in this country for it. Um, the only there is a vaccine in the USA for it, but it's not a very good vaccine. Um, so there is nothing you can prevent them, uh, for, you can do to prevent them from getting the disease, uh, from contracting FIV except the best way is to stop them from fighting. Um, so if, it, for instance, if they are a cat that fight, you might want to keep them in. Um, if they are an unneutered male, you've got an unneutered male tomcat, then you may well want to get them neutered so they don't fight. If you have an unneutered male tomcat coming around fighting with your animals, you might want to keep your animals away from it. Uh, you may well also want to try and get in contact with the owner of that cat and ask them to, to, to do the responsible thing and get them neutered. Um, if the cat is a stray, then it's probably worthwhile uh, ringing the RSPCA who will uh, catch them and, and get them neutered to try and stop this problem. You know, unneutered male tomcats are the major vector or the major way in which this is spread. So let's say the worst has happened. Um, 
they've contracted it. Uh, how do we diagnose it? Well, there is a blood test. But as with all these things, it's not as simple as it first appears. So we can take a little bit of blood from, from your cat and we can run it in-house here and we look for something called antibodies. So antibodies are something from the body which essentially bind onto the virus and, and, and knock it out. So we look for those antibodies. Now, there is a bit of a latent period just after they've been infected. So if they've had a fight, uh, they've been exposed to the virus, um, they may well have a very low antibody level because the body hasn't upregulated to st start to try to fight it off. We also find in late stage animals um, that their essentially their immune system is ruined. So they've got no antibodies to, to raise. So we may well get uh, false negatives in, in that case. So the, the test has to be really, really sensitive because we want to eliminate as few false negatives as we can. We, you know, we don't want to miss those animals that actually have the disease. So the test is really, really sensitive. It picks up as many as we possibly can. The unfortunate side effect of that is that you get quite a few false positives in that case. Um, so you may well do a, a blood test and it comes back as positive. Yes, it's got FIV. Always, always, always that needs to be checked and it needs to be checked with something like a, a PCR polymerase chain reaction test that needs to be sent off to the lab. So the in-house tests generally are pretty reliable at ruling it out. I, if it says negative, you're almost certainly it's negative. If it says it's positive, mm, could be positive, needs to be double checked against another test to, to ensure that's the, you know, that that's the case. So let's assume that they come back positive and it has been um, confirmed by a lab. What sort of signs would these cats show? So if they're in that sort of first period where essentially the virus is attacking the immune system but nothing else is really happening, um, probably see nothing at all, actually. These cats can be completely asymptomatic, you know, no signs at all. As time goes by uh, and they start to develop feline AIDS, which is when the, the, the kind of syndrome, which is a collection of signs, starts to appear, we might start to see things like uh, general ill thrift. So, you know, just the coat looks a little bit starey. They start to lose weight. Um, they might start to show gingivitis or ulceration in the mouth, conjunctivitis, recurrent respiratory infections, diarrhea, all these kind of things. Um, Generally, the way we diagnose these cats is essentially they've come in for a problem and we've treated them for that problem, say diarrhea, and they don't get better or they get better and then they get worse again really, really quickly. Um, and that then starts to ring alarm bells in, in our heads that, you know, there's something going on here in the background and maybe we ought to do a blood test at this stage. Um, so any kind of ill-defined sign which is going on for a number of days, weeks, or they get better and get worse, got to do a blood test for FIV. Got to do a blood test for FIV. It's such a simple thing to do in-house and easy to rule out. Um, so if they are diagnosed with it, is there any treatment? Not really, unfortunately. People have tried antivirals and, and things like that and, and nothing really seems to, to help. At the moment, unfortunately, there isn't the alter, there isn't the corollary of, uh, of prep which they use in humans. Uh, so it's very much based on uh, treating the signs of the of the problems that they have. So you know, if they do develop conjunctivitis, maybe sort of antivirals into the eye or antibiotics into the eye, depending if they get a bacterial infection. Um, so yeah, just treating those secondary infections that they they tend to get. Um, Actually, the quality of life of these cats, though, can be really quite good. And just because a cat is FIV infected doesn't necessarily mean you need to put them to sleep. They can often be really quite happy cats. Um, but the, the important and responsible thing to do is to keep them in. I know that and, and some cats that really enjoy going out, that might be a quality of life decision. You know, you may well decide that my cat needs to go out, but they've got FIV 
it would be kinder to, to put them to sleep. But the mo most cats are just really quite well to be in indoors. You need to make sure that they've got good, you know, they've got litter tray habits. They, they, they like to eat and drink inside. They've got sort of environmental stimulation. They can, they can play with things in the house, all, all those sort of things. But they really, they shouldn't be let out because they, they are a potential, they could potentially spread it to other people's animals. So the responsible thing is to keep them in. Um, Cats don't often, well, they can come in, in multiples in a, in a household. Um, if one cat has it, um, you may well decide to test every other cat in the house. Because if one cat has it, and they've all got it, great. But if only one cat has it, and the other two or three cats in the house don't have it, there's a decision to be made. You know, do you keep them together because they don't fight? and maybe feed the cat that has um, uh, has the uh, feline aids separately. Make sure that they've got really good flea prevention. And that, that's one of the things, because we don't know whether it gets spread, you know, making sure that biting insects don't go to them is, is quite important uh, to, to po avoid that possibility of blood transmission. So, you know, do you keep that cat to uh, allow them to mix and socialize, but feed them slightly separately? Uh, so you kind of reduce the, the really risky activities. Um, do you rehome that cat? You know, do, do you um, take them to, uh, uh, you know, give them to a, an auntie or an uncle or a sister or a brother or a, ch a child or a parent, you know, just to allow that cat to live out its life. Um, if you are going to, uh, the, the final option is obviously, do you put that cat to sleep? If you are going to do that, I would always say, because of this latent period, at least, put the cat to one side to a room or upstairs where they can't mix for a couple of weeks, then retest the, the other cats after three to four weeks. Uh, that way you will avoid that, that latent period. So there you go, feline aids. Um, it is a slightly complicated subject, I suppose. Um, again, dogs, people can't catch aids from cats with feline aids. They generally have a good quality of life. They generally survive for five years and upwards after being diagnosed. And there are lots of things we can do to treat the, uh, the secondary infections, which are the things that cause them problems. Um, and yes, the blood test is really good at eliminating it. Not so great at positively diagnosing it. You need to do secondary, secondary tests for that. Hope this is useful. Bye.